Good morning and welcome to the Bobby Moss Stand. My name's Gary and I want to discuss with you, well, what happened last night and how ready we are for the season. But first of all, welcome to my new studio, which is not quite finished yet. Lighting's a bit odd. Uh, that'll change. Uh, got loads to add in the background, but it's good enough to do a show and that's all I wanted to do anyway. So um, as you know, this is my new channel. So please could you subscribe to the Bobby Moore Stand on YouTube and please give the video a like and hit the bell notification icon. Now, um, hitting like does a really good thing actually. It, so it tells the YouTube algorithm to send other people to watch this video. So it's really, really helpful and I'd appreciate that. So look, let's look at last night's game. Now, I don't know who thought it was a good idea to go to Florida in the middle of, um, you know, the stormy rainy season. I mean, if you've been to Florida and you've done the Disney thing, you realise that this time of year, the heavens can just open. And when it comes down, it's like monsoon season, right? It's awful. And plus, they get some really violent storms out there. I mean, violent on a different level to what we get, right? We have a thunderstorm and it's it's generally all right. Sometimes it gets a bit hairy. Out there, it's all, you know, it's fork lightning and bloody everything. It's the full, it's like a film. It's like a horror film. Well, we've taken our team out there during a horror film and asked them to play Wolves um, and Crystal Palace under a new manager in the space of a, you know, it's basically, this is using up, to my mind, a couple of valuable weeks of pre-season time. And um, we could have done without this. I don't know why. I don't know why we've done this. Clearly done it for the money. There's no other reason why we've done it. But, um, you know, th this is this is this was not a good idea. And I think last night it showed as they were dragging, trying to drag the water off the pitch and get it ready for uh, uh, to play. I gave up waiting about 12.30, about half past 12. I thought I'd get up in the, in the morning and watch it instead. No way I was going to, you, you know, it, then they said one o'clock and then they said two o'clock, believe it or not. So the poor people that actually stayed up and watched it, talking 4am. So instead I went to bed, got up this morning and made myself miserable uh, that way instead. Because, let's be honest... That was a shambles. It was a shambles. There was, um, all right, you, you may pick out one or two high points from that, but it wasn't good. But the thing I like about Lopetegui is he doesn't hide his discontent. It's all over his face. The guy has got an extreme, you know, uh, diagnosis of resting bitch face. You know when he's angry. And you've seen, I mean, you only got to just search for Lopetegui angry and you'll find him screaming in the face of referees, bawling at players, doing everything, right? He wears his heart on his sleeve and I kind of like that. So afterwards, you know the sucky, licky uh, interviewer who, who used to line up the, the, the questions for his predecessor? We did the same thing. He said, all right, boss, all right, boss, how are you doing? He said, uh, I thought there were a, a, quite a few positives to take from that tonight, boss. And he said, no, not many. He said, "Not enough. It, it was, it was, it was not good enough. We have no excuses." It's like I, I think maybe the uh, interviewer needs to give up that approach with this plug. Doesn't fit. It doesn't work. I think if he's happy, it'd be great. But yeah, I think this first part of the season is going to be a little bit tense, if I'm being honest. And there's only one reason for this, and it's the same reason that has got us playing a fucking diabolical pre-season series of games out in Florida. And that is the ball, David Sullivan. They will not put. He will not pull his finger out <coughs> and get deals over the line. We badly need players. We badly need players. Lopetegui needs to be backed. You know what happens if you don't back him, Sullivan. It, you ain't an exception. You ain't different. He'll walk out on you, us, right? I don't want to see him walk out. I want to see him given the players he needs. And at the moment, he badly needs a striker. He badly needs a right back. But that ain't all he needs, right? He, he needs some other players as well. So, And there's also several players who, they're the same problems. If you watch that game, you won't be surprised to hear that, you know, Thomas Suchek gives the ball away in midfield. That um, Kurt Zuma's half asleep and can't run. Uh, that um, Maxwell Corne is still missing, even though he was on the pitch last night. It won't surprise you that those problems still exist because they've existed for bloody ages. It's time we solve those problems. Get rid. Get those people out of the club. And I'm not being funny. Zuma was the captain last year, which means he's probably got uh, some sort of influence in the dressing room. Well, if that's the case, I don't want that influence in the dressing room. Get rid. Cut your losses. Right? That's a lot of money. But even if you have to pay him off, 
just get rid. Um, Suchek, look, you're going to get a decent price for him anyway. Let's not pretend he's something that he's not. He's a destroyer, and he's a he's this guy that makes late runs into the box to get his head on a on on a cross. Right, he's not one of those midfielders who can play a possession game. So let's not fool ourselves into thinking that he is, because he isn't. I think Ward Prowse is, but again, we won't know that until he's got the whole team around him and the whole shape. Now, and I know we've got some big pieces missing, notably Bowen, um, Alvarez and, and Paqueta. But look, Alvarez is going to be missing for a while. We need to cope without him. Thank God we've got Freddie Potts because he was probably the one shining light out of last night in that um, he looks like he's a mature player. He looks like he's ready for some first team action. And my God, we need someone in that position to be ready because it's... Um, well, it, it, that position in central midfield without Alvarez is going to leave us a gaping void just like it did last season. And I know it's going to be a different approach, a different way of playing football. But if you put in the same players in who are going to make the same mistakes, you're not remedying the issue, right? Now, you can get money for those players. Now, on the upside, you know, Agued looks pretty good, right? I don't know if he wants to stay. Apparently, he doesn't. Uh, that'll be a shame if he doesn't. Uh, again, he's not dominant in the air, but then again, you, you know, what would the starting pair be? Would it be uh, Mavropanos and Kilman? Well, you, you know, because neither of them are a leader. But then, nor was Zuma. And then I don't see Ward Prowse as a leader. Who the bloody hell's going to be a leader? The only leader really that we've got in the team, well, you could say that Bowen might be a leader. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, the jury's out on that one. I think I, I wouldn't be against it. I wouldn't be against it. I mean, he has committed his future to the club and he's married into the West Ham royalty and everything else. So I would not rule it out. But um, Alvarez is clearly head and shoulders the captain for me, the one who leads by example. But then he's going to be missing for the first four to six weeks of the season, right? And then who knows? It might be a troublesome uh, path back. Strange the way we've had no updates on him at all, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, what we need to do is primarily we need to bring in a couple of players in the next week. I mean, the right the right back. Do it. Get wan -Bissaka. Stop messing around. We've played this long, convoluted game with Man United in the hope that we can knock a few million off. Well, look, it seems to have worked on this occasion, but it didn't work with Kilman. It didn't work with Duran, right? This is like a once in a blue moon, you're going to get a couple of million off. Is it really worth dragging out the whole fucking window, messing up the whole window and risking not getting the players you want just because you want to save a couple of million? Is it? Is it really? It isn't, is it? Right, so Sullivan, for Christ's sake, go and do what? You've only, you've only got a couple of jobs to do. Watch games and help to sign players, right? What else do you actually do around the club? I wonder. I bet not very much. Right, you love playing the old football manager game, don't you? Right, so look, we need, I would, I would personally, the team needs leadership, right? The team needs leadership. It's in dire need of leadership. And, um, and this is why Duran, for me, um, he is a risk, a massive risk. He's in some ways like Skamaka in that he's the unfinished article. He's got a lot of talent and he could go on to be sort of world class. But on the flip side, he, he, he's out of control. He's out of control. He just, at the moment, he, he, he's just ignoring what, what Aston Villa say. I mean, look, the other night he was on Instagram giving it that, right? Now he's going to have disciplinary charges from Aston Villa. This is a guy to say out of control. I mean, put that, put, you know, put ourselves in Villa's shoes. What we would be saying if he did that to us in a couple of years' time, we wouldn't be happy, that's for sure, right? But it might not be a couple of years, it might be this season if Lopetegui leaves him out for a couple of games. So look, that puts the wind up me big time that we're willing to pay 40 million, let alone give away one of our best prospects in Lewis Alford. Come on. I couldn't believe that happened. I can't believe that Tim or Loppy would have sanctioned it either. That must be a Sullivan little, uh, oh, give me a couple of million off. It's a player that he has to pay the full price for, so he's trying to do a deal, right? Probably not one that's through one of his preferred agents. Anyway, look, that's just speculation. Anyway, um, look, we need a couple of players. The, player, the team's going to be better, obviously, when we bring Bowen and Paquette back. But one thing's for sure, we can't lose, um, we can't lose Caduce. There's no way we can lose Caduceus at the moment. Not unless we've actually signed players and we've got replacements ready to go.
But the way it stands at the moment, you know, he, him and Bowen, they're going to be the two still who are going to create the chances. Antonio is 34. And we know that the raft of different strikers that have come in, you know, and gone on to do good things, actually. Skamaka, Hilaire, people who have done good things before, like even Ings, right? Uh, uh, Chicharito. It's a big list of strikers. And always what's happened is Antonio's ended up being the main man again. Uh, and I think a lot of that is to do with the old striker's ego. I think they, and I think he, he, he absolutely suited the system. I think you can do without um, him. I think if you played any sport, right, any sport where you're down the pecking order to someone, you're, you know, you're secretly hoping that that person fucks up. Um, I don't think that's me being dishonest here, right? I think that's that's actually that's actually true because you want to get your chance. And so I think what he was saying when when Skamaka was getting a start, when Haller was getting a start, Antonio became outspoken. If that suddenly happens with, for instance, Duran, then that's going to bother a player like Duran. It could put pressure on him. It might put pressure on Skamaka and Haller because he's seen as like the 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 you know the incumbent, the legend, if you like, right? I think if you're going to sign a young player like Duran, you need to find you need to find a backup as well, and you need to put. Antonio out of his misery and let him have his dream move somewhere. Um, that's what I believe because I think these people, certain players, they become too much of an influence in the dressing room. And I do remember I get flashbacks, and I think I don't know who it was. I think it was um, I think it was Halle. It might have been Skamaka. I don't know. One of the two, right? But there was this video on West Ham uh, West Ham YouTube where. The, the player was, it was his first day of training and he was just coming onto the pitch. And it was like a school playground. You had Antonio over there with the popular kids. And as this geezer's come on, he's, all you can hear is Antonio's mouth going, 50 million pound, 50 million pound. It's like, you know, oh, welcome, welcome, mate. Yeah, I hope you do well. Um, you're putting pressure on him from the start. That's my point. Uh, however... I, I, I kind of think that Lopetegui is more engaged with his squad and his players. And I like to think he wouldn't let that sort of stuff go on unchecked. I like to think he takes care of the players and doesn't leave it to the players to take care of the players. Right. Um, okay. So, so enough about that. It was an appalling night. It was an appalling night. You, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to relive it, to be honest, but I think they they scored one good goal and we made a couple of mistakes for the others. You know, one where Thomas Suchek gave the ball away. Um, yeah, he did. And the other one where Kurt Zuma um, just didn't track his man. He was half asleep. He was jogging. Like, like we said a million times last season, he's not a leader. He never will be. And he hasn't got the... He's, he hasn't got... His legs are not working anymore. And that is, for me, legs and knees are a primary requirement for a football player. You've got to have legs. Um, he ain't got any. So, look, I think we need... This is what I think we need. I think we need experience. I think paying £40 million for Duran with the team the way it is that's lacking leadership, that could be a bit of a recipe for disaster. This is where I'd go and spend the money on the finished article. The finished article. Go and get. Um, uh, there's a, there's two there's two players I get actually, and I think they've both been ruled out. But I would get them because I can see the team needs leadership. And number one is Ivan Tony. I mean, there is no. It, it's a, it, defenders hate him. He's a bit of a bully, right? He would add presence, significant presence to our front line. He would create space for um, Bowen and Kudus. Um, he would give Paqueta another target to aim at, right? He, it, what you're getting with a striker, I think you need to, for a striker, if you're going to rate how successful they were, you've got to look at how many goals they, they returned. So you take the price tag and then divide it by a number of goals and it gives you, you know... Um, how much per goal and the lower that value uh the more you know more value you guys got out of that striker essentially so there are people i mean you know antonio wasn't wasn't even signed as a striker but in real terms he's been great value 
right? Really great value. But then there are people who 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 just scored one or two goals or didn't score at all, or a handful of goals and then were out of the side. Like Skamaka, he cost a fortune, um, and we lost a few quid on him. Um, I think with what you'll get with Ivan Tony is you will get 15, you know, 10, 15, 20 on a good season. If he's playing a good side, I wouldn't rule out 20, but 15 goals a season regularly for the next four or five years. That's a good return. That's a good return for your money. You're not going to get that sort of player on a bargain deal. You don't know that Duran's going to come in and do well. He might, he might do a Marco Boogers on us, right? But... Um, you know that Ivan Tony is exactly the right profile and will do well. So I hope we can do a job there. I I don't see us I don't see us signing him because what what's what's Sullivan going to do? He's going to go to Brentford and say I know you want fifty. How about thirty? How about thirty one? How about thirty two? Um, and then at right back, you know, we we badly need um Wan Bissaka. We badly need Wan Bissaka. I would rather him than the geezer at Southampton, KWP, because I don't know if you watched the FA Cup final, but I don't usually watch many other teams playing football. But I did watch the FA Cup final, Man City against Man United, and uh, Man United won. But Wan Bissaka was spectacular in that game. Literally, he had. You know, there's a lot of talent. City have got down the left hand side. A lot of tricky players. A lot of fast players running at him. He he was he was having none of it. I mean, literally having none of it. He he kept them quiet until they doubled up on him towards the end of the ninety minutes and eventually got a goal back. But you know, in a one on one situation, there is no one better than him. He's he's fantastic. Pace, positioning, timing, and experience. He's a, he comes across as a bit of a leader as well. But the one I'd bring in, given our current situation as well. And I know you might think this is a big fucking waste of money because he's near the end of his career, his age and everything else. But Kante, I'll bring Kante in because you saw what he could do in the World Cup. And again, what you're looking at is how many games will he play? Will he be value for money? 20 million, a top draw, very, very high level player who still got it, who still got it. He was special. He's still special. Bring him into our side. it would be the best player, right? Still. And he'd probably be the best player for two years. Now, if you're saying that it ain't worth spending twenty million on that, I I, I don't know what you. I, I I can't explain it to you, right? I think that we need experience. We need proven players. We've got a lot of youth, a lot of up and coming talent. They need to blend with experience. Otherwise, we end up with a rudderless, leaderless mess. Um. So look, the job is not ours. The job is Sullivan's. Is all we can do is moan about it. Um, Tim finds the talent. Sullivan doesn't sign it. He pisses around. Now's the time to actually back the manager, go out and get the players he needs, preferably in time for the new season. I won't hold my breath. I guarantee we finally sign almost all the players we need, but not quite all of them in the last couple of days of the window. But I'd happily be wrong on that. Um... Bloody hope I'm wrong anyway. Anyway, that's me done. It's my first gripe of the season. At least it's not about the manager, I suppose. I actually quite, I, I actually quite enjoy Lopetegui. I'm quite enjoying him because I can, I, I, I feel like I can relate to him. He always tells the truth, no matter how brutal it is, and uh, and I think that will serve to make me <laughs> less reactive, because last thing you want to hear is someone gaslighting you, right? Just tell us it was crap. I think he'll do that. I think he'll do that. So, um, so look, as long as he gets backed, I think we're going to be all right. If he doesn't get backed, especially in the next couple of weeks, um, I think we might have a bit of a struggle at the start of the season. We might have. But anyway, that is me done. If you've enjoyed this show, the first in my new studio, which will look very different in a couple of weeks, by the way, but it is what it is. It's taken me ages to get to this point. Um... If you've enjoyed this show, please subscribe to the channel. We're nearly at 3,000 subs, which is quite amazing, really. Thank you so much to all of you who subscribed already. It's really, really helped. Um, and please give the video a like as well, because it, it sends the YouTube algorithm towards this video. All right, so um, until next time, I hope to be talking about some transfer news in a couple of days' time. Talk about who we've signed and how great it's going to be. Hmm. See you soon. Kevin Yorns.